I am Katie Zafiris, and I am evolving. Gold medalist from the United States of America, Katie Zafiris! Uh, nutrition is really important to me to be able to perform really well. I work with a nutritionist because I want to be able to fuel properly and um, with the right things. If I'm wor wanting to know like how to implement something into my training, then he kind of helps me along with that timing. So um, it's definitely I think something I think about, but also something I have a lot of support with. I've gotten a bit better with it as we as we've gone along with training and racing. Right now is in like the base phase of training. Like I'm probably eating a lot more than when I start racing. I'm not training quite as much. So I'm eating a little bit less and fueling a lot more specifically for the specific race or the specific session. And with Super League, it's so back to back to back with racing that it's really important to make sure that nutrition is, is solid because if we have that like 10 minutes between a race, like and I need to refuel, I need to know which one is gonna be able to give me that energy or sustain me across the whole three races. Um, right now, I'm just getting ready for the day. Normally, just I like to eat my breakfast and then look at my plan, look at the specific training sessions for the day and just kinda, I've already scheduled it out, but look at the specifics. So I use, I like to use Polar uh, for watching my heart rate. Uh, I like using, the Verity, which is a really cool arm strap. You just uh, you just put it on your arm and it has a optical heart rate sensor. So it's super easy um, to slipping on the armband. It's a lot easier for me. And I don't pay attention so much to my heart rate throughout the session, but it's something that I really like to look at afterwards. Yeah, so we have a three and a half hour ride. We're gonna ride out to a, a hill that Tommy and I have found in the area, which actually was um, kind of a challenging thing because uh, this area, while it's great for riding, doesn't have any like steep, long hills. Um, but we found a good three, three minute hill, which is really all we need. So we're gonna do eight to 10 by three minute hill reps on uh, Bynum Ridge Road. And for that, we'll do the, the odds are gonna be just steady and then the evens at minute one and minute two, we're gonna do a 20 second acceleration. All the types of sessions are really accumulating to help me with the Super League racing style because you need the strength of the hills, but also like the skills component is so important in Super League because all of the races are super technical. So being able to put together and be strong across the board in both the strength and the skills um, areas, that makes me just that much better of a competitor on race day. So I, I was just really excited just to have a solid session after feeling really fatigued for the last couple weeks. I mean, last week I had eight to 10 by three minute hill reps and uh, I rode the 90 minutes out. I did 1.33 of, of the session and I was just like, this fatigue is not just like muscle fatigue to like fight through, it's just overly fatigued that was gonna put me in the can if I continued going. So made it home took such a concentrated effort so then coming back here uh, this wednesday i was like oh are my legs gonna be the same as last week and well i feel revived i mean tommy was saying because i was yesterday on the run i was like well i'm really tired like am i ever gonna feel untired <laughs> again and came out here with really good energy probably one of my best sessions for a good long while and felt really strong Katie's mentality is one of pure focus. Uh, she wakes up in the morning and the first thing that she does is write out her schedule. Um, she writes everything down that she's going to do, um, small goals every single day, um, and then she just tries to hit those. At the end of the day, of course, she's gonna go through and she has all her um, schedules that she'll check off the things she did. She'll write out 10 things every single day that made her happy or that she was that she enjoyed and 
she puts that into the each day every single day she'll do one of these things and she's one of the most uh, thorough people thorough athletes that in her training peaks which is the program that her coach uses in her notes she'll write write like an entire book each day about every session just to fill in the coach with every single possible detail of what happened and like there's very few people that you'll find that will do all that um, and so that's kind of an insight to her mindset and the best that I could give <laughs> As an athlete, I would describe myself as very strong, um, adaptable. I would describe myself as evolving, as getting better over time, um, always learning. So all my total hours are basically, I would say around like 23 average, 20 to 25 uh, per, per week, sometimes a little bit higher. But I do two hours of strength, I do about a little over five hours of swimming, so well, maybe six hours of swimming, and then 10 to 12 hours on the bike, and then I would suppose it ends up being like five to six hours running as well. Normally we don't have days off, um, travel days if you count those, but honestly I would rather be training than, <laughs> than traveling most times. We'll take, I'll take two weeks after the season that are often like completely no physical activity, definitely not uh, the normal activities for me if I do anything. So it might be like a walk or a hike or something like that, but I take a good two weeks where I don't swim, bike, or run. The mentality of sport is such a crucial part of how to be successful. And when I was younger, I always thought if you need to work on your mindset, then you're weak. And like, I very quickly learned in triathlon that that's not the case, although I wish I would have learned a little bit quicker. <laughs> um, I would say like the most impactful moment for me was probably going to the Rio 2016 Olympics. And there was this big hill that everyone had talked about leading into the Olympics, but um, I was fine with the uphill, but no one had talked about the downhill and the downhill scared me to death. And so when I saw it, I think I cried the first time and I just like lost sight of what I was good at and I was only focused on this downhill that I was telling myself I wasn't good at and I, I wouldn't be able to do. And so after that, I started talking to a sports psychologist more regularly and she really helped me to just start like accepting feelings of like those different emotions going into races and being able to not, not really resist them, but just refocus them. And also helped me to come to a point where when I'm working on my skills or when I'm in a race to stay relaxed, because with the bike, that was the one that I was learning the most since I wasn't a cyclist when I was younger. And so I would go into these races and training sessions and I'd be scared. And the more scared I am, the more tight and the more rigid I am on the bike, which is more dangerous. And so it took me a little bit to figure out, okay, like if I relax my shoulders, if I relax my hands, like, and just try to take it step by step rather than just wanna be an excellent cyclist, but rather build off of those skills rather than be from uncomfortable to like, tour de France, like that's not gonna happen for me. <laughs> we're at Triangle Aquatic Center, um, where we've been swimming while we're in Cary. Um, it's an amazing facility, and we always swim with their master's program, so either waking up at, uh, well, waking up before five, in the water in, at 5.30 in the morning, um, we typically do their sessions, so there's a session that's created by the master's coach and then that's the session we'll do and then if we need to do a different session then um, Joel will give us that. They've been great because they've been flexible letting us uh, kind of mix around with things and just being a, a really adaptable for us. Yeah, so um, I really would like to just have a little bit of a harder session today. Um, it's great because we have plenty of people who swim a really nice pace for me and they can hold me accountable in the water. Tommy's a bit faster, so uh, I have people who are more my speed and, and it's really nice. Actually, we, Joel, that, like never does drills. But my coach, uh, we don't typically have drills implemented into our training. It's just more about uh, the amount of swimming that we do. In, uh, the master's program that we've been doing, we do do drills. Uh, some of my favorites are like, more like the sculling and uh, just like kind of underwater stroke drills. So uh, we do mix in those a lot for the preset. So we'll do a warm up and then we do the preset and then we do the main set. 
Yeah, I mean, it's really to gain speed in the pool. It's really just um, putting putting that into the training program and having hard efforts into the training program so that when it comes to like the Super League races that we're already ready to go and uh, dialed in. So um, for sure, lots of hard swimming at some point, not yet, but at some point we'll work on pack swimming and like sometimes I'll practice drafting off Tommy and being in his draft. So um, all getting ready to race. Race strategy for swimming is really just to get out get out fast and continue being fast throughout the throughout the rest of the race but also really a lot about awareness and knowing where people are and whose feet to be on and making sure if I am on somebody's feet on the swim that I can see ahead enough to make sure that they're also on the feet ahead of them because sometimes what can happen is gaps will form because you think you're on the front pack but really there's been a gap that's been created by a, another swimmer and now you're back a little bit further. So really being mindful of if those gaps are going to form and what I can do to get around them. My name is uh, Eric Hernandez. I'm a strength and conditioning coach. I work at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill with uh, several of our uh, sports teams, but I also train uh, private uh, athletes, or co local athletes, high school, college and uh, professional. So we're at Eric Hernandez's home, who is uh, my strength coach. We're in uh, his facility and we're about to do some strength session. Uh, it's really something that I've found valuable in my training, but it's more supplemental than it is kind of like the focus for the disciplines. Um, and so we just do an hour session and um, I worked with Jeff Marino in Santa Cruz and uh, he connected me with Eric here now that we moved in Cary, North Carolina, and it's really awesome because not only do I have Jeff as support, but now I also have Eric. So now I get even more people on my team, and it's really helpful. And the approach that we try to take is as individualistic as it is. So we kind of look at what her day-to-day -day is and, and work, build a program based off of that. Um, you know, treat her like a person, more, first and foremost, see what she needs uh, physically, mentally, and all those things, and that's how we build the program around it. Uh, luckily, uh, I just complement the program that's already really uh, awesome, and I just, you know, build upon little things that we see that uh, we know that can help her in the long run stay healthy, but also uh, perform. So, for my strength training, it's really um, just super relatable to triathlon and really specific to my sport. So, um, we work a lot on having like the swimming strength, but also for running, just ha making sure that I'm strong and have the stability so that I don't get injured, but also that I am more responsive, particularly in the run. So, we'll work with just a lot of, a lot more of it is just like body weight or like kettlebell type exercises. So we'll do from step ups and marches and um, just working on all those specific things that I will translate right into swimming, biking and running. I, I told, when we started, first started working with this, uh, with Katie on this stuff, well Jeff said it too, I'm sure before, but that every, every race ends in a sprint. So you might as well have good sprint technique and, and some of the qualities that sprinters have, even as, a, as an endurance athlete, so. We're gonna work on some of these drills that help with her, her lower leg recovery, uh, elasticity, and, and things like that. Uh, we are currently at the Old Reedy Creek Trailhead uh, in North Cary, and I like running here because there's just so much variety. So you can go up this hill right here, and you're in Umstead, which is full of beautiful trails, single track or wide fire road type trails. It's way more hilly in there, so um, it's got a lot of nice variation. Or we can go behind us, there's a bike path, it's a bit more flat, uh, it's asphalt, so if it's we're doing faster running, we've tended to do a little bit of like pickups on there. And then over here, there's just like trails, mountain bike trails. So. It just has so much variety in such a small area and you can run for a really long time whichever direction you want basically. So um, no matter what type of uh, session we have, whether it's an easy run, a long run, a build session, it doesn't matter, we can do it here. Um, we did hills here the other day and so we did about 10 by 45 second hills and then we went and did 
10 by 90 seconds on a flatter area so it's great that everything's just in one spot I mean to achieve from these sessions I really just want to keep getting stronger and faster and uh, keep building on all the fitness that I have been building on for the past few years I'll use pace and Tommy for um, actual workouts and then um, easy runs don't really look at the pace we just kind of run um, a lot slower than a lot a lot of people think we do um, we run at a very conversational pace and Tommy setting the pace and really listening to my breathing and um, responding in a way that if my breathing super controlled and he thinks I can go a little bit harder he'll like make it go a little bit make us go a little bit faster so um, it's really nice because while I think having metrics and paying attention to like pace is important I also like that I have Tommy and my my own feelings and sens sensations to kind of help calibrate things so that I'm never held back by pacing and also I'm just making sure that whatever I am on the day that I'm I'm using that as my like set point I guess I really just hope to become the best triathlete that I think I can be. So far, I feel like I've kept building over the years since I've started. And that's been really exciting because I feel like there hasn't been a year where I finish and I'm like, oh, okay, like that's all I have. Where do I go from here? Like every year I've identified places where I can get better. And um, I think my goal is by the time I retire to feel like I got really darn close to the highest peak that I could get.